<laughs> Shake a five. High five. Oh, yeah. High five. One more. One more. Taylor, buddy, what's going on? Dude, how are you, man? Good, buddy, good. I hear that you uh, are living in an RV now. I actually am. I am living in an RV. I gotta tell you, it is uh, just the best life ever. That is so cool. So where are you staying? Where do you boondock? Actually, right now, I am boondocking at this gun range, and it's super cool. I uh, There's a campsite just down here, and all you have to do is pay $150 a year and you get to use it seven days on and then you have to be gone for one day. Seven days, one day. So you can pretty much live here for $150 a year. Seriously, 150 bucks a year and you get to stay here? $150 and I get to stay here. I literally have 200 acres of land to myself at four o'clock when they lock the gates. I have hot showers, I have a washroom, I have a full gun range at my disposal. And the best part is I have a little pond by my campsite that I can go fishing in. You've gotta be kidding me, that is so cool. I wanna get into the RV lifestyle too, it sounds amazing. It really is amazing. And if you think about it, Victoria's real estate market is so crazy right now. For an average home, you're gonna pay about $850,000. So for me to live here, 150 bucks a year, plus my finance on my truck and camper, which is a thousand, just over $1,000, it's a pretty good lifestyle. A couple nights ago, I was backed onto a golf course. I literally had a golf course as my backyard. Man, this RV lifestyle seems pretty amazing. Can you show me around? Yeah, dude, of course, let's go have some fun. What is going on, everybody? How is everyone doing this morning? I have to say, I have to say something. I am super pumped right now. Like, I am so happy. I am so happy. I'm not letting this weather get me down. That's not happening. It's raining, it's a little bit cold, but you know what? I am located, I am boondocking on a gun range. So this is what happened. I was leaving Victoria, I had my camper all set up, and I was headed to Tofino, because I want to go there and spend, you know, maybe a month there. And on my way, I thought about it and I thought, Oh yeah, I still have that membership for a gun range. It's $150 per year. And I remember somebody saying, yeah, you can get seven nights of camping. So I thought, okay, well, I'll just stop in. It's on my way. It's about 15, 20 minutes out of town. I'll just stop in and see what's going on. So I stop in and there was like nobody around. There's nobody camping here. I literally have 200 acres of land just outside of Victoria for myself. And that's not even the best part. I asked him, I said, so what's your rules? He said, seven days you can camp here and then you have to be gone for one single day and then you can come back for another seven days. Free firewood, hot showers, fireplace, there's a pond that I can go fishing, we're gonna go fishing later. I mean, seriously, how amazing is that? So let's go enjoy this boondocking experience. Like this is what the, uh, the RV lifestyle is all about. Also, in just a little bit, there's a few uh, questions that came in that I did not answer my last boondocking uh, video. So I'm gonna answer those. One was traveling with a slide. What do I do about my holding tanks? I wanna talk to you guys about generator. Don't like my generator anymore. But first, let's go explore this. I don't know why I'm pointing at you guys like that. But first, let's go explore this beautiful place. And no, this morning I woke up. This morning I woke up and I said, I'm gonna film. And then it was raining and I went, oh, that's too bad because this camera is very delicate. And then, I th and then I said, you know what? No, because if rain's gonna stop me from filming, you guys aren't gonna get a video for like four months. <laughs> so let's rock and roll. Roll the intro, or if I've already rolled the intro, roll the B-roll. Man, I'm on cloud nine.
Okay, so check this out. Up here you have the shotgun range. Over there you have the rifle range. Past that, way in the bush, you have the multi-purpose range. And right in the middle, you have one camper, and that is me. Should be good to go. Oh, I, I've just been shooting shotguns, so I'm like, I'm ready for that kick. Yeah. There's no, like... there's no kickback or nothing. These, these things are just tiny. That rain's not gonna get me. All right, so there are a few questions on my last boondocking video that I would like to answer. Number one, my slide. Yes, when I'm boondocking, I usually keep my slide in. Matter of fact, I usually keep my slide in even if I'm at a campsite like right now. Um, I just personally don't really, it's not necessary for me to have it out. And so if it's kept in, it's just less work when I pack up and go and uh, a little bit less drain on my battery to uh, to bring it out. The second question that I had, which was a really good question, I don't know why I didn't go over it, but it's holding tanks. My fresh water, my gray water, and my black water. What do I do about that when I'm boondocking? So fresh water, I'll get fresh water from uh, gas stations, RV parks, and if it came down to it, which it hasn't yet, I'll literally go up to somebody in a residential house if they're mowing their lawn and be like, hey, do you mind if I steal 56 gallons of fresh water off you? I don't have a problem doing that. So fresh water, although sometimes tricky to come across, you just be a little bit creative and you can find some fresh water. That's how I do it. Gray water, I simply just dump out in a ditch. Soap, food products, and water. It's fairly, fairly clean water. I don't worry about that. Black water. Everybody has the question, what do you do about black water? Well, I actually don't use my toilet. I don't use my black water tank. So when I'm boondocking, I'll just find uh, uh, public washrooms places, wash, uh, um, gas stations, grocery stores, fast food restaurants, and that makes it really easy because there's nothing in my black water tank. So you don't have to mess around your way back in the bush or you're in a city, you don't have to, you don't have to find the, uh, a dump station. That was the second question. And the third question, actually the third question, I didn't get a third question. I wanted to tell you guys, there's three ways that I can uh, get power when I'm boondocking. So, so boondocking means that you don't have power hookup. So number one, when I'm driving my truck and my truck is hooked up to my camper, this little cord charges my batteries, right? That's great. Number two, on top of my roof, which I will do a video about soon, I do have a solar panel. So when it's sunny out, it charges my battery. But I live in Victoria, so it's not gonna be sunny for another five months. So I am now reliant on my generator. See that thing in there? But I hate it. I thought it was good. I thought, you know what, it works. You can, you know, turn it on for a little bit. It'll charge your batteries right up. But that was when I was doing a lot of 
camping in RV parks and hooking up to power. You know, you'd hook up to power for a couple nights and then you'd a couple nights not. Now I haven't hooked up to power for a very long time and my batteries are very, very dead. So I fire this up, but it's so loud. It is so, so. So what I did today, this morning actually, is I went and bought a portable generator. And you probably heard it as I walked past the RV, but I bought a Furman. Fur I don't even know if that's how you pronounce the name of the company. Furman? I think it's Furman. Furman? Um, this is a 2000 watt generator. And this generator is much quieter than my, my uh, propane generator. So I don't feel as guilty running that for eight hours to charge my batteries as I do running this for eight hours. So that 2000 watt generator is, uh, is great for me. It's kind of right in between like a thousand and a three thousand and what you get from it is I can run my space heater off of that. I can turn my lights on, I can turn my TV on and also charge my battery at the same time. Whereas a thousand watt, you can barely turn your space heater on. A thousand watts more for your lights and, uh, and very simple appliances. And then a 3000 watt, something that I can't do with my 2000 watt, is you can run your air conditioning unit and your microwave. So I just, 2000 for me is perfect, but it depends what you, you, what you use it for. Maybe you need a 3000 watt if you're gonna do uh, a lot of boondocking and, and enjoy your, uh, your air conditioning and your microwave. Look at that thing. Okay, I might have to go into town to get marshmallows. We'll scratch that, we're not gonna do s'mores because it's getting late and I have like maybe an hour left of sunlight and I wanna go fishing and then start a fire. So we'll just do steak and potatoes. Well, that didn't really work. <laughs> Okay, let's go to go, go to this spot over here. All right, this is what it's all about. Well, it doesn't look like we are going to get a fish. So, steak and potatoes, fire, cold beer. Let's do it. Oh, we got her going. I'm telling you guys, I've, uh, I've I've never ever in my life been this happy. It's like it's like I'm doing everything that I want to do, and it feels so good. It feels so good. So if I can leave you with something, <laughs> I just like touch the tripod. Like I was like, hey man, like if I could leave you with something. <laughs> very close with this camera, I'm very close with you guys. If I could leave you with anything, it's just find something that makes you happy. No matter how many times you try and fail, just find that one thing. Because when you do, 
everything is better. Like everything. And I get it, like, like, like 5% of the things in your life are out of your control, right? But 95% of them are in, within your control. You know, you have the choice to do what it is you want to do. And I think that if you're only gonna go around once, if you only get this one life, if you're not doing some, something that makes you happy, then what's the point? You know what I mean? Like if, if life was a game, being happy would be winning, you know? I hope you're picking up what I'm throwing down. So find that thing, find that dream, and live it, my friends, live it. And if it's the RV lifestyle, do it tomorrow. Do it today, do it tonight. Says the guy who financed $110,000. Best decision I've ever made. Couldn't be happier. Love it. Well, I think that's it for me. Uh, actually, one more thing. The gate's closed at the front. Nobody left here. I'm the only one in the shooting range, 200 acres of land to myself. Pretty cool feeling. All right, guys, I'll see you tomorrow or the next day. A video is coming up of house versus RV and then I just, cause I wanna spend a couple nights here and then I'm off to Tofino. So then uh, we'll go up to Tofino. It's always a pleasure. I thank you so much for watching my videos and take care of yourself, all right? Bye bye. Oh, the steak's burning. Woo!